on February 2, 1982, 22-year-old African-American Calvin Willis was wrongfully accused of a sexual assault case involving a 10-year-old African-American girl. The incident happened late at night when she was sleeping in her home when all of a sudden she woke up to a man standing above her, completely disrobed except for a cowboy hat. After the man grabbed her, she was choked and took a striking to the head. She originally escaped, but was later caught in the front yard. The next morning, the victim was picked up by her mother in lots of pain, with bruising on her face. Unfortunately, she was unable to provide a decent description of the person who assaulted her. The police collected many pieces of evidence left behind, including the nightgown and the undergarment worn by the victim. The clothes worn by the victim were analyzed, along with the blood and semen stains found on the clothes. The semen stains revealed blood group O markers, which matched Willis originally. This kept Willis in the case, but the various hairs found on the bedspread did not match Willis. How did Willis become a suspect? He became a suspect because one of the girls claimed he had been at the house that same day. It is unknown what connection the suspect had with the victim's family if any connection at all. There were no other official suspects involved in this crime. However, the victim did state that a second man, wearing cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, had visited the home, but this was not disclosed to the defense at the time of the trial. Despite all of the testimony by the witnesses, as well as no confirmed connection to the crime, this case resulted in Willis being sentenced to life in prison without any possible parole. In 1998, however, the case was officially accepted by the Innocence Project. The Innocence Project's purpose is to reform the criminal justice system and perform various DNA tests to exonerate wrongfully convicted people from crimes they did not commit. After the case was accepted, the nightgown, boxer shorts, and the rape kit, including fingernail scrapings, was submitted to forensic experts for testing. Samples were collected from the fingernail scrapings and the boxer shorts that allowed for DNA testing. The contributor to the fingernail scrapings and the blood mixture found on the boxer shorts was proved not to be Willis, and he was excluded from the case. On September 18, 2003, Calvin Willis was released from Louisiana State Penitentiary at Angola after wrongfully serving 21 years. The appeal using DNA evidence was a tremendous effort on the part of the forensics experts, the lawyers, and the Innocence Project. The choice to further analyze the samples of evidence using DNA testing was a lifesaver for Willis. I personally believe the process in finding the offender went too rapidly and that the evidence they did have was not enough to convict Willis. The reason for this was because most of the evidence that was obtained was from the viewpoint of eyewitnesses, which is one of the leading causes of false convictions of innocent people. Eyewitnesses aren't always able to remember what they claim they saw, and the human brain cannot always remember specific details of information. This proves the fact that eyewitnesses are not reliable contributors towards the conviction of a criminal in any given crime. Furthermore, DNA evidence is only reliable when the procedures used to test are precise and organized. If not, a trustworthy and accurate basis cannot be produced for a proper conviction. Overall, this case, as well as many others, greatly emphasizes the importance of using reliable and fair methods to gather evidence to avoid punishing an innocent person for a crime they did not commit.